What's going on, guys? How's it going? Um, it's your boy, GS Luke, bringing you guys a MMA DFS video for this week's fight night. Um, I hope everyone had a great Memorial Day weekend. We obviously had a little bit of a weekend off. Um, granted that there were no UFC fights, so I hope, ever, hope everyone enjoyed their time off. But this week, we're back to the grind. Like I said, we got a UFC fight night between two absolute stud heavyweights. Um, our picks were dog shit last week. Uh, I'm not going to gloss over that. Um, but we're suiting up this week. We're getting right back into it. And uh, hopefully we're going to come home with a three of three this weekend. So uh, like I said, we'll hop right into it with our picks. At number three for my picks this week, we have Miguel Beza, a minus 120 favorite over opponent Santiago Ponzinibbio. And he comes in at a really good price of $8,300. So Beza has a perfect record. Um, we've seen that before in the UFC, a 10-0 perfect record with an absolutely stud finish rate as well. So he's coming against a very experienced opponent in Santiago, and while he doesn't have as much experience as his opponent, I think he has the advantage in every other category. If we take a look at their on the um, on the feet stats, we can see that Baeza does have an advantage in landed strikes per minute as well as his efficiency. So Baeza is somebody that pieces up opponents. He doesn't throw high output, but he lands most of his punches. Uh, the last time out, we saw that come to fruition. He struck with an over 70% efficiency rating absolutely pieced up his opponent before getting the submission there in the second round i think he has very high potential this week as well um, because of the advantage on the feet but if it if it if the fight ends up going to the mat he also has a very similar advantage he's somebody that has a lot of submissions he averages more than one submission attempt per fight um, which is excellent and he also finishes a lot of them as well if we take a look at his track record especially before entering the ufc he finishes 30 percent of his fights by submission and in the ufc we saw that last time out as well so he doesn't really have a weakness it seems he has that submission game on the ground he obviously pieces people up on the feet and for that reason i don't see a reason he loses this weekend um, Pons Nibio obviously has a lot of experience. He's scrappy. He's not easily finished, but he's getting up there in age. He has almost 40 fights on his professional record, and a young up-and-comer without much scar tissue like Miguel Bieza should have an absolute field day. So he's going to be a core part of my uh, DFS lineups this week and should be yours as well. Number two pick is going to be Jairzinho Rosenstreich, one of the heavyweights uh, in the main event this weekend. And he is a minus 125 favorite over opponent Augusto Sakai. So he also has a very favorable price tag in the $8,200 range. And I love targeting fighters in that $8,000 range. Not only does it give you a lot of flexibility with the rest of your lineup, it also makes it a lot easier for them to pay off their price tag. And with Rosenstrike, you have a massive KO threat. He's somebody who puts people to sleep with one punch, and it doesn't even have to be a punch that's winded up. He's uh, knocked people out with power jabs. Uh, we've seen him uppercut people into uh, you know, the, the afterlife. And uh, overall, I absolutely love that potential for a KO. If we take a look at the Vegas odds, we see that it is a minus 175 chance for a finish. And Augusto Sakai is not the reason why that line is where it is. Augusto Sakai does have a few finishes over his career, but he's much more of a volume fighter. He's somebody that wears on opponents, loves to put his weight on opponents, beats them with output rather than with their strength. So if it does go to a decision, Augusto Sakai is almost certain to win. However, we see Las Vegas thinks that it's more than likely, you know, favoring on very likely that it ends in a finish. And if Rosenstrike goes out there, knocks out Augusto Sakai, he's more than uh, he's more than likely to pay off that price tag. So I, I love his chances this weekend. Rosenstrike's coming off a disappointing loss, and this seems like a, a teed up shot at an easy opponent uh, to get back on track, especially somebody with uh, as much flashy knockout power uh, as Rosenstrike. So that's why he comes in at number two. And finally, at number one, guys, we have my favorite play of the slate, and that is going to be Mason Jones, who is a minus 300 favorite over opponent Alan Patrick. He's also the most expensive fighter on the DraftKings slate at $9,500, but he's more than worth it in my book. If we take a look at Jones and his last time out, it was a very uninspiring decision loss. He averaged a ton of strikes on his feet, averaging just about 8.5 strikes landed per minute, which is excellent. 
and uh, you would assume someone like that would win their fight. However, he was taken down. He was embarrassed in a decision loss, and uh, to be quite honest with you, he's going to come out guns blazing this time. Mason Jones was undefeated before that loss. He's a huge prospect on the UFC's radar, uh, a guy with elite power, a guy who throws a ton of punches as well. And to be quite frank with you, I think the UFC and fans you know, together were both surprised by that performance. It looked like Jones had a little bit of nerves. He wasn't throwing his typical 9 to 10 um, punches per minute like he's used to. It was more in that 7 to 8 range. And I do expect um, the experience to come around. I expect him to be a lot more comfortable in the ring. Um, the Vegas odds dictate that as well. They also have a lot of confidence in Mason Jones. And I expect him to either win by a first round KO or to win in a very, very handed decision. He's somebody that, you know, scores 200 to 250 significant strikes when he's on. Uh, somebody that in his amateur career uh, was putting up 300 plus significant strikes at time, uh, which are numbers that we just don't see. He's somebody that has cardio. He's able to throw a lot more punches than people in his uh in his uh weight class there and uh we just haven't seen it yet in the ufc um the vig um vegas odds obviously dictate that they do a lot of their homework and uh i'm all over matt jones this weekend um alan patrick is somebody who has to win via the takedown he's also smaller for his weight class and uh mason jones undeniably is going to have been working on that takedown defense the takedown defense was obviously the reason he lost last time out and uh for the last three, four months, I, I guarantee you pretty much the only thing he was working on was that takedown defense. Um, he knew he'd be fighting Patrick, and uh, as a result, I expect him to up 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 that part of his game and to come through huge. So he's my number one pick this weekend. I think he's going to be the number one scorer on DraftKings, and he will be in pretty much every lineup that I have. Um, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, hopefully these picks aren't as dog shit as last week. Hopefully we go three for three. Um, these guys are all favorites. They're all people that are favorably priced as well. Uh, so I think we're going to have a good week. Um, to fill out your lineups just for the rest of them, you know, sprinkle in a couple of those underdogs. Uh, you're obviously going to get a lot of underdogs that win in the UFC. Pretty much every fighter has, in, you know, that fighter's chance. Um, so you can take these three, sprinkle in a couple more guys and uh, have a pretty good lineup there. So good luck. Hopefully you guys take down a lot of money this weekend. Just hopefully it's uh, not against me in any of my contests. Uh, just <laughs> jokes aside. Uh, but I'll see you guys next weekend.